Joining us right now on the Buyers Barricades phone line is the Cowboys Hall of Famer Troy Aikman on Sean and Fish 105.3 The Fan. Good morning, Troy. How are you, man? I'm good, guys. Thanks for having me. So, I don't know. Real quick, Fish. I don't know if you remember this, Troy, but 10 years ago when I was first hired, the station was looking for a Cowboys (laughs) insider. And our former boss, Bruce Gilbert, pulled me into the office and he hit play on his voicemail, and it was a message for you advocating for Mike Fisher <laughs> to be hired here. Do you remember it, and under what substances w- w- were you on or under? Uh, I don't recall, yeah. So whatever it was, it was pretty good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the first time a job recommendation had to undergo drug testing here yeah. at the fan. <laughs> <laughs> Troy, uh, you are a fan of Mike McCarthy's hire. I know uh, that you supported Mike Nolan as well when you were doing the Cowboys Washington game earlier in the year. How do you feel about those two guys right now, given what they've had to go through? Do you give this staff a pass because of COVID? Because you cover all the other teams. You yeah. know how much they've had to overcome. What do you think of the job that the two Mikes have done? <laughs> I maybe I should answer that after the game on Sunday. I, I think, uh, I, I mean, obviously it's uh, it, it's been, I think it's fair to say it's been a disappointing season. But as I've said many times, I, whether it's in Dallas or anywhere else around the league, I just feel that these coaches have been put in such a disadvantage. And, and I know you can look to other teams who have first-year head coaches and say, yeah, but look what they were able to do. And, and that's fine. And I think that's a fair critique but I've said that you know these teams have played games at times where they haven't even practiced I mean there's been very little work on the field and and for some that's been more challenging than for others and when you lose your franchise quarterback it becomes obviously even a lot more difficult so uh, I, I I do think that we have to give all these coaches a, a pass overall and as far as how have they done I think what's happened I applaud the coaches. I probably applaud the players more, but I think that does fall into the category of the coaches getting it done in terms of what they've been able to do here over the last few weeks. And and I think from a defensive standpoint, I know when we had the Cowboys early, we haven't had the Cowboys this year as, as much as what I've had them in years past, but a lot of the issues that they've had haven't necessarily been because of scheme and you could argue that maybe they were trying to do a little too much with as little practice time as they had coming out of camp and players were confused or whatever it might have been and I and I think that's fair as well but I think it's some of the coverages and defenses that have been called they've they've had people that should be in the right place the players just haven't executed at times but they're doing a much better job. So I'm curious as anybody to see what happens. I don't like to see anybody lose their job. I'm hopeful that Mike Nolan doesn't. I do think he's a really good football coach. And I believe that Mike McCarthy is as well. Obviously, a lot of this should pivot on uh, what happens in Week 17. If the Cowboys win and go to the playoffs, we're playing a little game called Mirage or Look in the Mirror, Mirage or Mirror. If they go to the playoffs and then whatever happens against Tampa, are they a losing seven and nine program and they need to reflect on that? Or are, hey, we're a winner. We went to the playoffs. Well, let me tell you a little story about 1983. And I was playing for the uh, Henrietta Fighting Hens and, and we went two and eight. And yet we made the state playoffs. And so the city, it was one of the worst records in school history, but yet it was the first time the school had made the state playoffs in 20 something years. So. No one really knew how to act, and I think that, that I think that's probably how people feel, you know, here in Dallas uh, uh, about the Cowboys. But I, hey, I will say this: I, I, I've said it throughout the year. I do feel that the Cowboys are the best team in the division, and and some would say, okay, well, who cares? What does that necessarily mean? Well, what I think it means is that they could go into the postseason, and they are capable. We know that they are on the offensive side of the ball, and I think the defense is is playing better. They're at least getting the takeaways and doing some of the things that they've had a hard time uh, doing in the last couple of years. And this team is capable, when they're playing well, I think they're capable of of, uh, if, of giving anybody a run uh, and, and making it hard on them. So I, w- I would not count them out as, as far as just saying, oh, okay, well, what does it matter if they win the division and they have a home game? They're going to lose in the wild card game anyway. And But I, I don't necessarily find that to be true. I think they could possibly win a game. And 
And it's like we had Seattle last week, and they had started winning games. Their defense had been playing better, but they really hadn't played a real good offense. And then they play the Rams, who are a pretty good offense, and they pretty much shut them down as well. And I think that you start to gain confidence, and that's where this Cowboys team is. They're, they're beginning to believe in themselves. Probably not beginning to. I think they are after this three-game win streak coming off of that tough loss the last time we saw them against Baltimore. And so, yeah, they're going to play better teams once they get into the postseason. But confidence is a, is a hard thing to really quantify, and, and I think right now this team's playing with it. Troy Aikman right here on 105.3 The Fan. Uh, Troy, Mike McCarthy said that a year can carry over to another year. And I'm curious, do you believe that in a salary cap league, that no matter what happens against the Giants, that this little win streak, this positive momentum can really help next year? Does that – is that not the case in a cap league with, with more turnover than when you played? Well, I think it's uh, – I don't know that it matters whether it's a cap year or not a cap year or what era you're talking about. I, I believe that if you I, you finish a year up to where you feel good about yourself, you go into the off season and you do, you do feel optimistic as opposed to if you ended the year on a sour note. So from that standpoint, yes. But I also know that each year's – a different season and you kind of have to build it uh, each and every year. And so going into training camp, hopefully we have a normal off season and things get back to normal in general around the world. And, and they're able to build on what they've done. And I think that that's certainly uh, something that they can do. And I just like the resolve that everyone has shown. It would have been real easy for them just to lay down and, and, and not compete and, get back in the thick of things and a lot of things have had to happen in order for that to occur not just within themselves but also with Washington having lost the last couple of weeks and the Giants have lost the last few games and but they here they are and um, I said it before last week's games if I was handicapping the division I would have said that I I think that the Dallas is the favorite Uh, I think for Washington it helps that they get Alex Smith back of course but uh, I, I still feel if I was handicapping it right now I'd still say Dallas uh years ago and you must have been what 22 when you famously said this isn't a football town it's a winner's town yeah uh I I thought first of all I thought it was uh insightful for a kid who could barely shave yet (laughs) but but I also thought it was true why did so many people then and even now take it wrong because I think they took it wrong yeah, I don't. I don't know that any fan base really wants to hear that um, because I think that fans in general want to believe that they're always there for their team through thick and through thin, and and yet that that's been proven not to be the case. At least it was back when I was 22 years old. There was no one going to games. I mean, the stadium was half right. full, so it wasn't like the the Bears in Chicago or or the Chicago Cubs who hadn't won, and yet everyone's still going to those games. I, I think Chicago may be an outlier. I think most cities are, are like Dallas. I think most cities are, are winner's towns. There are some teams that draw regardless of what it is that they're doing. But, I, I, you know, the Rangers made it to the World Series, and everybody in town was a Rangers fan. I, I, I didn't know a Rangers fan, really, for a good part of the time that I've lived here. And it's just like, you know, nobody even knew what hockey was. The Stars came to town, and everyone was a hockey fan when they when they got good. And and I don't think that's that's not a criticism. That's not negative. I, I there's no question though. If if you were to say is Dallas a Cowboys town or a Mavericks town or a Rangers town, I think they do a great job of supporting teams when they're having success. They get rewarded. The teams get rewarded by their success with the fan support. But uh, Dallas, the the Cowboys are are a little more immune uh, to what they put out there on the field. I think people do, and there's less games. There's a lot of reasons for all that. But but yeah, there's no question. It's a it's a winner's town, and even during some slumps uh, over the last 20 years or what have you, uh, the fans still have rallied and they've gone to the games. But they sure show a lot more support when the team's winning. The iconic Troy Aikman with us here on 105.3 The Fan. You learned some other lessons as soon as you came to town. And I always thought, you know, your dad is famously tough and your mom is famously sweet. And between the two of them, and then you realizing, I better do it like Roger Staubach did. The next thing you know, uh, we look up and you're raising $61 million in a year for the United Way. 
Yeah, you know, it's. Uh, I think my life in general, uh, Mike, has has just been about being around good people and talented people, and uh, you know, whether it's in my personal life or my professional life, or uh, what I'm able to do philanthropically, I, and United Way being a big part of that, and so. A lot of people, that, that's, uh, I, I get a lot of credit for that, but it took a lot of other people to really make that happen, particularly the companies and the individuals who, who donated the money. So uh, I love this town. I always have. Uh, I, I'm not a native, as you know, but I certainly feel that I'm a Texan. Uh, and I think that, you know, probably more now than at any other time, point in, in my time here, which is really saying something. I, I, I'm, I'm more proud today to be from Texas than I've ever been, and I've always been proud. And I, and I just, I love, uh, I love the people of this state and the way that they go about their daily lives and uh, have a zest for life and, and all of those things. So uh, I've been thrilled to be a part of it. I was talking to someone the other day, and and it's interesting because you come out of the draft, or you, you you come out of college, and and the draft's taking place, and and very few guys, when they're the number one overall pick, get a chance to go play for the team that they want to play for. And I was one of those guys, and so uh, I was really blessed to be able to be picked by the team that I wanted to be picked by, and to live in the city that I was hoping to live in, and uh, and build a lot of relationships, both personally and through business, and still be here, you know, however many years later. Troy, as, as you bring it back to the Cowboys, we have Jerry on every week. We have for 10 years, and we're always arguing about, you know, f- football front offices, and that's been something you've talked about having an interest in. Every year we talk about the Cowboys' talent, but when they don't succeed, well, it starts from the top. Can you help, can you help us ex- understand what that means? If the front office is putting talent on the field and every year we say the Cowboys have top five roster and they have maybe the best offense, what else isn't being supplied from some of these front offices when it doesn't result in the standings? Well, I think that within any organization, within any team in the NFL, within any uh, major sports franchise regardless of whatever the league is you're referring to or whatever business if 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 a team is not getting the results that they desire and that's happening over a long period of time i think you've got to take a hard look at what it is that you're doing i I think that is common sense and and so you know years ago when al davis was the owner in, in in oakland for the raiders and and they weren't having the kind of success. They were struggling, you know, struggling much more than what Dallas has struggled. I mean, I think that the, the standards for Dallas are really high, and they should be. And I don't think anybody, uh, you know, shies away from that. I think that's, uh, that's a credit to the success that this franchise has had over the years. But the Cowboys have had, have had good years. They've just come up short in January. And then there's some years where they've had really bad years and, you know, and haven't even made it into the postseason. But, you know, they've been pretty competitive over the years, but they've fallen short of their standards in January. And, and when that continues, I just think that it just stands to reason that you have to look at everything that's being done. How is it being done? Why are we coming up short? What can we do differently? Um, and maybe that's happening. You know, I, it's easy. You know, one of the one of the things that you learn when you get into this side of things on the media side, as you guys know, that you know we all have opinions and and you give them, but they're easy to give when you're not the one <laughs> who's actually having to. You know, I tell you what I'd do if I was in charge. Well, you know, and you don't always know all of the factors, and I think that. Uh, you know, but but it, it it makes sense that I think you have to look at things with a critical eye. I think coaches have to do that with with their rosters and their players. I think players have to do that with the way that they train in the off season, and I think that the front office has to do that. And if there's a way to do it better, uh, or if there's a way to bring somebody in who can make a difference, I think you owe it to the fan base. You can't always talk about hey, it's about the fans, and then then not put the effort forward and. I'm not. This isn't directed at the Cowboys. I'm not suggesting that. I just think, in general, regardless of what organization, what business, what team you're referring to, uh, if the results aren't coming in the way that you hope that they should, then I think you got to make changes. What's your uh, Dak Prescott financial temperature gauge? Is there a too much is too much ever? Uh, yeah, I think that. Yeah, for, uh, yeah, absolutely. There's 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 a time when there's 
when uh, when it's too much. But I'm a big fan of Dak, as I've said many times, and uh, and and we've seen the quarterback that got released in Washington, and some, and we've seen those types of situations over the years. And I think when you start handing out money and you start talking about franchise quarterbacks, yes, the play on the field is where it begins, but there's a lot more that factors into that, more so than in any other position. These guys that are quarterbacks are the face of your franchise. They're the CEOs of your franchise. They have to be the ones who really establish the culture and the accountability within the football team. And if you don't have the right guy in that role, then I think you're going to really struggle as an organization. And Dak checks every box, in my opinion. And uh, and so that's why I've said for the last couple of years I wouldn't I wouldn't hesitate at all to pay him. Uh, I, I've been most impressed with what he has shown when he came in as a fourth-round pick, where he was, what he was capable of doing at that time, and the work that was involved in making himself the player that he has become. And he won't stop. I mean, I just know. It doesn't matter how much success he's had. He's just wired that way. And I would, uh, I'd go to bed. You know, again, this is, this is another one of, I'd tell you what I'd do if I was in charge. <laughs> but I, I would sleep real good if I had Dak Prescott locked up with a big contract and not be worrying about, you know, his commitment to the team and, and uh, commitment to winning. There's Troy Aikman, great citizen, uh, terrific girl dad. Maybe the only guy that could ever strip me of my Texas Father of the Year award that I win every year. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we're really proud of, uh, of all the things, obviously, that you're accomplishing, not only in football and on TV, but seriously in the community. You are uh, one of a kind, young fella. I appreciate you, my man. Always have.